Welcome to Electron Online, and in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate the maximum angle of the incline before the disc begins to slip instead of roll. All right, so how do we go about doing that? Well, first of all, let's take, uh, take note of the specifics. The mass of the disc is 5 kilograms. It is indeed a solid disc, so the moment of inertia would be 1 half mR squared. The radius is 0.4 meters, and the coefficient of friction between the incline and the disc is 0.4. So let's first start with uh, uh, writing down all the vectors, the uh, I would say forces acting on the disc. So we have the force of gravity, mg, and then we have the perpendicular component of mg, which is mg cosine theta. And this angle here is theta, which is the same as this angle theta right there. That's the angle we're looking for. And then we have the force pushing the wheel down the incline. That would be the parallel force mg sine theta, that's the parallel component of the weight. And then we have the normal force pushing back, the normal force of the incline pushing back would be equal to mg cosine theta. And then we have the friction force causing the rotation of the wheel. Remember, without the friction force, the wheel would simply be sliding down the incline, but with the friction force, the wheel will be rotating. And so therefore, the friction force, by definition, equals the normal force times mu, and the normal force is mg cosine theta times mu. All right. The next step is pretty well the same as all of these types of problems where we have rolling objects. We're going to have two equations. The first equation is the equation of uh, Newton's second law, F net equals the mass times acceleration. The second equation is going to be the rotational equivalent of that, which is the torque is equal to I times alpha. The torque is what's going to cause the wheel to rotate, and we're going to try to find the maximum torque uh, caused by the maximum allowable acceleration before the wheel will no longer rotate, but actually slip. We want to find that, that point at which it would begin to slip. The torque, of course, is equal to the friction force times the radius of the disc because the torque is caused by the uh, product of the force causing the rotation which is the friction force times the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to the line of action of force which is the radius of the disc. So this would be the friction force times the radius equals the moment of inertia of a solid disc is one half mr squared and the angular acceleration can be found by relating the linear acceleration a to the uh, r alpha. So this is the relationship between the angular acceleration and the tangential acceleration, which is also the translational acceleration. And so therefore, alpha, the angular acceleration is a divided by r. So we can write a divided by r right here. And then again, notice that this r will cancel out one of these, and this r will cancel out the second one. And so we're left with the friction force is equal to 1 half ma and therefore the maximum friction force that you can apply to that rotating disc is equal to one half m times the maximum acceleration or the maximum acceleration will be proportional to the maximum friction force using that equation right there we can say that f net will be equal to mg sine theta minus the friction force pushing back up and that's equal to m times a and remember that the maximum friction force we can have will provide the maximum acceleration here and the maximum friction force is one half ma so we can say that mg sine theta minus one half ma max equals ma max now of course the friction force we know is equal to mg cosine theta mu so we can replace this by mg cosine theta mu is equal to one half m a max. Notice that the m's cancel out on both sides, multiply both sides by two, turn the equation around, and from this equation we can say that the maximum acceleration that we can have before the wheel no longer rotates or begins to slip is equal to two times g cosine theta times mu, and of course it's a static friction, so mu sub s. So that's the maximum acceleration that the friction force can provide. Now the maximum acceleration here will depend, of course, again about the angle. The steeper the angle, the greater mg sine theta. So the greater mg sine theta, the greater acceleration. But again, there's a maximum acceleration you can have because of the torque not being able to keep up to any greater acceleration. So solving for this, we can say that mg sine theta is equal to, moving this to the other side, 
three halves m a max. Notice that the m's cancel out over here as well, multiplying both sides by two thirds and turning the equation around, writing a max first. So we can say a max is equal to two thirds g sine theta. Now we have our second equation for a max. Notice that both of those depend upon the angle theta. And since we're looking for the maximum angle theta, we can solve those equations simultaneously because a max is the same on both equations and then solve for the angle theta. So I'm going to replace a max here by 2g cosine theta mu sub s. So 2g cosine theta mu sub s, whoop, mu sub s, not mu time s, right here, equals uh, 2 thirds g sine theta. Notice that we have a 2 on both sides, so we have a g on both sides, so the 2 and the g will cancel out. I can now divide both sides by the cosine of theta and move the 3 to this side. So we have 3 times mu sub s equals the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. And since I'm running out of room, let me move over to the last spot on the board here that I have. So the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta is the tangent of theta. So 3 times mu sub s equals the tangent of theta. Turning the equation around, the tangent of theta equals 3 times mu sub s, or theta equals the arc tangent of 3 times the static coefficient of friction. So that's the maximum angle. Remember, this was the maximum acceleration. Therefore, this will be the maximum angle that the incline can be before the object will begin to slip. And notice that it only depends upon the coefficient of static friction. All right, now with the information that we have here, this being 0.4, let's figure out what that angle is. So theta max, in our case, is equal to the arc tangent of 3 times 0 0.4. That's 1.2. So what is the arc tangent of 1.2? Let's find out. 1.2, take the inverse tangent, and I get 50.2 degrees. So the maximum angle, theta max, is equal to 50.2 degrees in this particular case. And obviously, the greater the coefficient of friction, the steeper the incline can be before the wheel begins to slip rather than roll. That's kind of interesting. Um, hmm. I guess we could actually do an example of a car driving down the incline and at some point, instead of the wheel still catching and making the car rotate, the wheel, the car will begin to slide. And in a similar fashion, we can actually figure out what the steepest hill is that a car can actually come driving down, depending upon what the coefficient of friction is between, of course, the tires and the, um, and the road. And so for those who like to go four wheel driving up in the mountains, that come in handy to try and figure out how to do that. All right, anyway, that's how we know what the maximum angle is before the wheel begins to slip.